I found myself in your position. And so I feel like it's a great honor after all these years to be able to come back and, and talk to some really fresh teachers who are just really, really excited about uh, making a difference here at the BC Edmonton School District. So um, just some things about myself. Um, I was born not here in the United States, but I was born in a refugee camp called Ban Binai, Thailand. And during that time period in the 80s, this was the largest Hmong refugee camp in all of Southeast Asia that was greatly supported by the United Nations. And so for seven years of my life, I lived in an impoverished um, uh, environment. And in 1987, our family got sponsored to come to the United States, and of all places, Merrill, Wisconsin. Okay, anybody from Merrill at all? Okay. <laughs> all right, so I lived in Merrill for a whole year and talked about standing out greatly. The school that I went to, I was one of two Hmong kids at that entire school. When I came to America, I spoke no word of English whatsoever. And so talk about a really terrifying experience not only the fact that you have been transported from Asia into North America, but you come over here and you're in an environment in which you can't communicate with anyone else. And so we lived in Merrill for about a year, and then uh, a year later we ended up moving to Wausau. And so my old stopping grounds is really in Wausau, and so I went through the whole educational system. And so in uh, 2000, I graduated from high school at Wausau West. My wife and I did it for a long time, month and a half, okay? All right, I just figured if she's the one I'm gonna marry, I'll well just save all that money on the dating costs, right? <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, went to UW Stevens Point, was looking to go into television broadcasting. Um, and then for many different cultural reasons, I felt like I should join the military. So in 2002, okay, uh, this is what happened. You basically surrendered your life for the next eight years to the government. And so in 2003, I went to boot camp down in Fort Benning, Georgia. In 2004, the Wisconsin National Guard out of Wisconsin got activated. And so we actually got activated to go and support Operation Iraqi Freedom. And again, I found myself being the only Hmong person that was crazy enough to do that. And then at the end of 2005, I came back. Uh, during my experience in Iraq, there were just lots of things that happened. It just really changed my outlook in life. Uh, I had the epiphany of saying, hey, you know, maybe I could just become a teacher. When we were overseas in Iraq, each and every day, we were working with the indigenous population, especially local children. And so my heart really just poured out to these uh, kids who didn't have a future. And so then when we came back stateside, I said, what could I still do to give the lives of our young people a better future. And so why not go into education? And so then in 2008, I graduated and got my, uh, my position over here. So I remember the first day of school so clearly. It was during a first period class. And so I had introduced uh, to my students that I had uh, gone to Iraq. And way at the end of the back of the classroom, there was a, a kid that raised his hand. And he said, hey, Mr. Yang, so um, you're kind of short to be in the Army. And I said, you are very, very correct. But then I said, but the smaller you are, the smaller of a target that the enemy can shoot you. So then he's like, that's very, very true. And so it was that positive message that I really empowered the students. You know what? If you've got it here, you can do anything that you want. It doesn't matter the size that you are. And so it's been a great privilege to be able to kind of be an ambassador on behalf of the Hmong people. And so tonight's presentation, this is geared specifically for new teachers. Um, some of you guys might have already been in sessions with me in the past talking about Hmong social norms. But tonight, I'm gonna talk more about communicating with Hmong families. And so that's what the presentation is all about. So again, I would just encourage you, just like with your students, you always ask them, hey, um, if anybody has any questions, make sure you guys raise your hand. And so I preface this because it's better for us to ask what we think are the stupid questions now instead of making mistakes later on dealing with the Hmong community and the Hmong families. And so um, just to kind of let you know, my job role is to serve 
Um, basically, the district teachers, which is all of you, the administrators, the Hmong students and their families, anything related to the Hmong, I am that go-to person. So later on down the road, if you all have any questions specifically related to different cultural aspects of the Hmong that maybe I have not done a PD about yet, feel free to get in contact with me so that I can help you out with that, okay? So the outline of tonight's presentation, number one, communicating with Hmong families, and then number two, parent-teacher conferences that I know that for all of you is coming up in the very near future, okay? So part one, communicating with Hmong families. So I've been in this position for a few months now, and you know, sometimes people just want to be really, really genuine, and they want to be really honest. And so they're, they're gonna ask me, Yao, how are your Hmong families different? And this is always kind of an interesting question because it kind of pits like the Caucasians against the Hmong, and it's almost like, no, what are the big disparities between like the Anglos and the Hmongs? And, and I just find that question really, really interesting, okay? And I say that because you know what? We're all the same on the inside. Because sometimes people think, hey, look, Yao, you guys are kind of different that we're like polar opposites. But the complete truth is, yeah, like, we are going to be a little bit different on the outside, but in the inside, we're all humans, and we long for the same things. We all have the same feelings. We all have the same needs. And so this is a mentality where I really wish that all of us, in moving forward, I, I don't want us to always think, Yao, what are your Hmong families like? I think the bigger question is, as a district, what are all of our families like, okay? Because when we, when we kind of separate, well, this, these are the Hmong families and these are the Caucasian families, I think already there's a divide that we already put between both these different cultures. And so, if at all possible, I really think that if we could erase that mentality of yeah, what are your Hmong families like? How are you all different? We're really not so much with difference. Physically, we're different, but in the inside, we're all the same, okay? We have a lot more in common than we do with our differences. I, I want us to remember that, that here at BC Evans, yeah, I may be Hmong, but you know what? I live the same life as all of you. Your students, regardless of what color they are, they live She said, well, how old is your oldest one? And I said, seven. <laughs> so then she said, is that possible? I'm like, well, I guess I'm a living proof of that. But, um, yeah. So they're like, why do you guys have so many kids? I'm like, well, I'm actually the oldest of nine. And so then my wife and I, we've been able to drastically reduce the down, this down to six. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty big cut, you know? And so this is all a matter of perspective, OK, you guys? Um, so Kennedy, Tegan, and of course Malachi, still learning that every time he throws his bobber out, that he's not going to be guaranteed a fish. <laughs> so these are life lessons that our kids still need to learn. He was not happy that his brother <laughs> caught the fish and not his brother. Okay? So an improved communication with among families is going to be dependent on how well you know the dynamics of each nuclear family. And so I say this because each individual family has their unique characteristics that is going to define them in different ways than other families, okay? So you knowing your students as families, and I put in parentheses, because I really think, you know, for this message, it's not so much that I'm encouraging you to just really know your Hmong students as families. I, I think as a holistic view, 
we all need to be able to see all of our families for the unique features that all of them have. But yeah, you know, there is going to be some subtle differences when it comes to the Hmong. So in order for us to really understand what our families are like, I do believe it takes a concerted effort for all of us to really reach out to them, and it's just not going to happen by chance. And so just for comic relief, here we go. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, right, you guys? Okay. So this is going to take a lot of effort on all of our parts, okay, to be able to know the dynamics of the different families that you and I teach. No two families are alike. What works with one family might not work with the next family. So I, I don't want you guys to be able to get these generalizations that like, well, this is what Yao said of the Hmong families, and so when I'm dealing with the Her family, they should just do the same thing as dealing with the Tao family. No, nope, they're all going to be very, very unique too. And this is something that we all have to remember, okay? I think that the major difference with the Hmong is, okay, it's that culture, the Hmong culture aspect. What uniquely defines this a little bit more is the culture of our culture in which we have been raised, okay? This is what it's all about. The major difference between me and you is that my upbringing was in a different country, in a different environment, in a different culture. And that has really affected me to this day. The same thing with all of you, because you grew up in, okay, in the United States. This is what defines you to be a little bit more different than me. And so we all have unique experiences that has made us the way that we are. And so collectively for the Hmong, we're a little bit different based on the history and the culture of that. Every Hmong family is going to be a little different based on two major factors. And this is something that, I guess, if you can take anything away from tonight's uh, discussion, there are two unique aspects that is going to make up these Hmong families. How traditional, how much of the values the cultural things do each of the Hmong families into. Every Hmong family, they're going to have their different values that they're going to hold on to. Others might feel a little bit more loose, like maybe we don't have to do that as much. And then the other piece, how American 